So you survived the typhoon and you reached Japan. Yes, but that was also a difficult experience. <laughs> I, uh, I saw many things in, uh, in uh, my first visit. And there have been other visits that I can expand more on the experience. But uh, it came time for me to go, and there was a French ship. And the day came to depart, and I was down in the hold, <laughs> hot and smelly. So how long were you in Japan before? About two weeks. The ship? About two, two weeks. weeks, yeah. Met some wonderful people. Actually, the man who was on the ship was a doctor who was uh, also a horticulturist. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he took me around a lot to see gardens and nurseries. Extraordinary things that I have never seen before. And we'll get into that later because I went there again with Mary Helen and my daughter, Shally. So that day comes, I'm down in the hold. One hour passes, a second hour passes. And we're not leaving. And suddenly my name is called. Come up and see the captain. And all these Japanese officials are there. And they say, you don't have the stamp to leave. So we have to take you off the ship. And then there are some French seamen and they say, we can hide you in here. I knew that mother meant me to stay. And so with my little bit of baggage, hardly a bag, I got, they put me off the ship. Mm -hmm. And here I am, and a man meets me, and he's, uh, who I had met just previously, he was there to see me off actually. And he says, uh, well, come and stay with me. And I want you to have a beautiful experience also. So the next day he takes me. And there's about uh, 50 young kids, maybe between 8 and 12. And he said, they want to play for you. It was an orchestra. Uh -huh. And they were all blind. And they played the most beautiful music. And I was in tears, and then I had to sing for them. And it was quite a wonderful experience in the end. But it was traumatic to being put off a ship. I'd never had that experience. <laughs> so then, um, and he, <coughs> who recently passed away, you may have heard, uh, sent me some money to fly to Madras at that time. Broken sandals, one shirt, one pair of pants, and that was it. And the bus from Madras to Pondicherry was three rupees. I had 10 rupees to my name. Which year was this? 1961. I arrived in the ashram, and there's Diabai waiting for me at Parker Charbon yeah. in those days. <laughs> and he puts me up and he becomes my protector. I arrive on November 23rd evening. Mm -hmm. And the next day, Dasha, and I see mother. Oh. And then very soon after that, she calls me. Now, in those days, no one was in the room with her. You went out of Sri Aurobindo's room, crossed the middle room, then the room where they would give darshan, and then just as you're going out the door, there was Mother's chair. And you were ushered in there at Mother's feet and just the two of you. So Mother greets me with this huge bonjour, <laughs> and uh, I touch her feet, and she says to me, 
Would you like to talk or would you like to meditate? I knew nothing about meditation, but I said, meditate, mother. Now I'm telling something that is a little difficult to tell. But I think I should tell it at this point in my life. I'll be 80 next year, and it's maybe time to share with the world something of her grace. I sat quietly, and then this flame starts, and it starts going up and up, and then these huge flames are going up in me. And, not, and, and burning, but there's no heat. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on, I don't know how long, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And I come out of it, just pouring tears and putting my head on mother's feet. And she says to me, you have just begun. <laughs> the potentialities are very great. And then she begins to talk to me about music. She says to me, is the music with you now? And I say, yes, mother, it's always with me. She says, not always. And she took it away for some time to prepare other things in me. It was incredible. But had you told the mother about your love of music or nothing nothing at all and then she becomes very quiet and she says to me in this huge voice you must bring down a new music And I say, Mother, because I, as I told you, I had been singing in New York, singing with Russian choirs. And I actually had a basso profundo voice as well as a bass voice. And I still have a little bit of it left, not much. <clears throat> so I say to Mother, but Mother, I, I don't know anything about combining words and music. No, no. You must go far above words and bring down the pure music. That has been my work for the last 56 years. And been an extraordinary work because 14 years ago I was also given the Adesh that the new music would now come through a collective soul not an individual voice and that's how the old choirs began and when they began in those early days, it wasn't an own choir. We just gathered because that's what Mother said, bring down a new music. And so there were four or five of us in the old Bharat Nivas hall that had such incredible acoustics. Okay. And we would sing. Maybe someone would read a poem and we would be singing with the poem or things like that. And then there, then there became one choir and another choir that I was directing and um, and even um, kind of plays where the choir would sing uh, mm -hmm. with the French people in, in aspiration. But while you were in the ashram, did you start with the music? Uh, you know, I have to bring that photo for you. I st uh, uh, let me go into that story. <laughs> uh, I have a photo of the first ashram choir oh. in 1961. And there's Prithwin 
Mukherjee yeah. on his crutches yes. and Manoj and Lilu and oh so many of them okay. Ratna and Dali now um, they learned very well we were about 25 30 people uh -huh. it was a big group and uh, some were good musicians also so I had a friend you may have known her Marilyn Widman yes yes yeah and Marilyn sort of, she used to call me her lion. Yeah. And she used to order me around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to Gampatram's for a <laughs> chips mixture. Yeah. <laughs> you remember this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that atmosphere and everything. Well, mother puts me up in Gampatram's place. Okay. okay. And there's a little outside room. It's two rooms, beautiful rooms. Yeah. And um, I decide that I'll have these three girls do incredible paintings. Yes. Ravi Bala, yeah. Chitra Niyogi, and grand sister Sandra. Okay. And they, they cover the walls. So I had people coming up all day long to see it. Dimitri would come with others and... <clears throat> anyway, back to the story. We have a choir now, and it's getting near Christmas. And Marilyn says to me, write to mother and tell her that you're going to sing for her on Christmas Eve under her balcony. Okay, I write to mother. No answer. Mother probably didn't get your message. Write to her again. So I write to mother again. No answer. Now I'm getting a little bit concerned because... I didn't want to disturb mother. Yeah. Marilyn pushes me again. She says, okay, just write one more time. Mother will answer you. So I write to mother and mother writes back. I would like you to stand by the samadhi. And she came down and opened that window. Well, being a callow youth, what did I know that this was going to be a darshan? Mm -hmm. So we get there, and the place is packed with people. And there's just this little space for the choir right by the samadhi. Now, I face the samadhi, the choir faces mother, and I give the tones. The moment they open their mouths, the most horrible cacophony you have ever heard comes out. Absolutely. Dimitri said, this is the worst music I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't realize they had never sung outside. Yeah. And the wind was taking the voices. They couldn't hear each other. What to do? I turn around and I look at mother. I said, Mother, we are singing for you. Rest of the concert, not one mistake. <laughs> and that was the Christmas Eve. And this was 1962? One. 61. Yeah. Our yeah. mother further said, gave us some guidelines. She said, sit in a circle and have no preconceived idea as to what will come down. And of course, we have read that's the way her music came. She would put her hands on the keys and let come what, what would come. So we did started doing that. Then she said, there is a music waiting just above the head to come down for instruments who are prepared. So today we work on the body consciousness, becoming aware that all parts of the body have to be in collaboration, diaphragm, 
chest, lungs, jaw, tongue, how to breathe, how to keep the ribs out so you don't give away the air you just took in. You uh, know this as I'm sure. And that we do for about 20 or 25 minutes. And then, as I've been studying and listening with the deeper listening of the soul for touches of the new music in various composers, and that will be the book I'm now writing, On the Descent of a New Music, and what these composers have brought down. We play a piece for five, five minutes maximum, and then we go into the alms. And that again was given to me. It will be only om. But it has to be pronounced as perfectly and purely and beautifully as possible. So that's the beginning of the Om Choir. Now, back to 1961-1962. Well, I'm a wild guy, and the peace of the ashram was just too much <laughs> for me. I couldn't take it, and I, I said, I have to go back. And then there followed a series of letters to mother, and I think I'll try and show you one of them. Now. How long had you stayed in the ashram before? I think it was April 62 I left. Okay. So you decide to leave in April yes, 1962. Yes, go back. Mm -hmm. But mother wants to see me first. And so there's another letter here, this very, very powerful letter. Did you ask her for permission before leaving or the decision had been taken? Um, that's a good question. I, I feel that, uh, as I remember, uh, I was in touch with her at almost every moment, and she wrote to me this most, I have to find this uh, hmm. letter here. <clears throat> So I write to mother, and I write, These problems are now confronting me, and I turn to you for their solution. Now that I definitely know that this yoga is my path, and that you are truly my guru, I don't really know what to do next. She had turned my life upside down. That one meeting was all it took. Just to look into her eyes, to be at her feet. Since my visa is expiring, I must leave India. Should I visit Europe and the Middle East or return directly to America? And there's another. Ah, oh, mother, in her own hand, return directly to America. And then I write her, enclosed are pictures of Anne, who later she named Ani, my fiance. We love each other very deeply, even though I am aware of the inadequacy of human love through Sri Aurobindo's writings. I feel that we are destined to consecrate our lives to the divine together. However, we have both agreed that we shall abide by your decision alone as to whether we shall marry. This is so important to us, Mother. Please let us know soon. Also enclosed is a sample of Anne's handwriting. 
No. But you had spoken to Annie about your yes. time yes. in the ashram. Yes. Yes. Mother writes, No doubt and no hesitation, you must marry. <laughs> No. Then, because I hadn't heard from her yet, if I return through Europe, should I go with Ivan Lara? I am not sure whether it is good for me to be with him. He was one of the most handsome men I ever knew, ever met. And joyous and But someone who had come to the ashram? Yes. And he said, I'll take you through Europe. I will show you Europe and we'll meet so many girls and oh. have parties. <laughs> Mother writes, better not. And she <laughs> underlines not. <laughs> the most extraordinary thing, Maurice, is that when I go to her, weeks later, she had seen so many thousands of people and she picks up every point as I had written it. And the most important thing I feel was that she, she says about this young man, it is better not to associate with those who live outside of themselves, mm -hmm. as it were. Beautiful. That was a signpost for the future. Beautiful. So now I write her another letter. Mother, I feel that I can offer myself to the divine through developing my voice and singing or through returning to school to study choral music, eventually forming a choir. Mm -hmm. As both of these ways require intense work, I would like to know what way is most pleasing to the divine. Or if I should do one now and the other later on, or both simultaneously, please help me with this question. One or the other, because the important thing, the most important. the most important thing, is not so much what you choose, but the spirit in which you will do it. And then that last line that I shall take into many new births. Keep living in you the spirit of consecration, and all will be all right. What did a 23-year-old know about consecration? Beautiful. And so you finally left? I left. In April. And I was... You went back to America. And I was determined to work for the mother, whatever I could do. And. Perhaps in our next series, I can talk about that.